Hi everybody, my name is Cindy and I craft here at Upcycle Design Lab. Today I'm going to be doing another Easter decoration project. Uh, we're going to be making uh, some little chick peeps out of plastic bags and also a cute little Easter basket using a cereal box. So if you like crafting with recycled materials, I hope you'll consider subscribing to this channel and also check out my blog at www.upcycledesignlab.com. So to make these plastic bag chick peeps, you're going to want some white plastic grocery bags, a cardboard template, you can make them any size you want, but basically you just want there to be a two to one ratio on the rectangle, a black sharpie marker, some plastic gloves, a little bit of black wire, this is some pretty thin wire and it's very easy to um, twist and bend. I think I got it at the dollar store with some red and silver wire. You want some cotton balls, a little bit of rice, or some small uh, grain, dry grain, split peas would work as well. A pair of scissors, some needle nose pliers, a hot glue gun, and you're also going to want some yellow alcohol ink and some red alcohol ink. And you can either buy your own or if you're interested in learning how to make alcohol ink, I'll put a link for that tutorial in the corner above. To start this project, I'm using four layers of plastic bag fused together. And if you're interested in learning how to fuse plastic and prep plastic bags for crafting, uh, I'll put a link in the video above. But this is just four layers of the white plastic grocery bag fused together. And it gives you a soft um, but fairly sturdy fabric to work with. So I'm going to take my template and I'm just going to cut out the shape from this plastic. For this next part, you're going to want to be sure you have some plastic gloves because the alcohol ink will stain your hands. And I have three pieces of plastic here. So I have my layers of plastic that are fused together that I cut out into my rectangle. Rectangle. I have just a, a small piece of scrap single ply plastic bag and I have my little piece of plastic that I've folded over and glued so it's a nice stiff uh, small piece of plastic. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the alcohol ink to color all of these. So this is going to be the body of the chick right here, the four plies of plastic that are fused together. So I'm just going to use my yellow alcohol ink and a cotton ball to color one side of the plastic yellow. And I'm protecting my table with a piece of uh, plastic wrap because the alcohol ink does stain. pretty much any surface that you put it on. If you do get it on something, you can clean it up with just plain alcohol, rubbing alcohol. But you can see it stains the gloves and everything. So, once this dries, I can go back and put a second coat on, just to make it a little darker yellow. So I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to go ahead and color my single ply of plastic with some yellow as well. I just need a few scraps of this single layer, just a little bit, so I'm just going to color half of it. This might be ready for a second coat here.
this single ply is pretty transparent, but I am going to go ahead and just put a little bit of yellow on the other side as well. And for this piece, which is going to be end up being the beak, that's why we wanted it to be a little bit stiffer. I may end up using some brown as well as red, but I'm just going to kind of mix the colors to try to get to a nice orange color. And I do want to color both sides of this as well. If you have orange alcohol ink, you could just use that. You can kind of mix the alcohol ink on the cotton ball itself. This away from your yellow because it will bleed into it. So once you have the color you like you can just let everything dry and we'll be ready for the next step. For this next step we're going to be using our rectangle of the four layers of plastic that we've colored. You're going to need some needle nose pliers and your uh, hot glue gun. And what we're going to do is we're just going to fold this over with the yellow side on the inside. And we're going to, we're not even going to use any glue, we're just going to fuse the plastic together along two sides. So to do that, I'm going to start with the folded end. I want to put my pliers about a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge. And I'm just going to take the tip of my heat gun. If you get glue on there, it's okay, but you don't really even need to use any glue. And I'm just going to melt the edge of the plastic right down, even with my needle nose pliers. And then you want to give it a minute to cool off before you pull the pliers away. and they will be a little hot so be careful but basically you're just sealing a seam into the plastic So once I've done those two sides, I'm going to gently turn the piece inside out. And you want to be careful not to rip open the seams. If you do, you can just kind of go back. Looks like I have a loose piece right here on the end. So I'm just going to crimp it again and seal it down again.
going to push the corners out gently with my finger. It doesn't matter if they're super pointed or not. Once you have the piece turned inside out, you can find the folded edge where it meets the, the glued edge or the fused edge. And we're just going to put about a half of a piece of a cotton ball for this size into that corner. So this will be the top, this will be the head right up here where the cotton ball is. And then I want to fill my a uh, little pocket about half full with the rice. And you don't want to, so we're going to go ahead and fuse the bottom shut, but you don't want to fuse it this way, otherwise you just have a flat piece. So you're going to fuse it the opposite direction. To close it off. And we'll just do that the same way as we did the other seams. You might have seen people make these before and they kind of just leave them in this little triangular shape. But I wanted to make mine a little more rounded. So to do that, I'm going to take the corners, the bottom corners, and kind of fold them underneath. So this is my head, this is where the cotton ball is. And I'm just going to take each of these bottom corners and fold them under and glue them to the bottom. And for this you do want to use a little bit of glue. So now this is my head, I've got a kind of a little pointed tail and a more rounded shape for the bottom. So next we're going to make the beak and the little fluff for the top of the chicken chick's head. And to make the beak, I just need to cut a really small triangle. pliers again to hold the tip while I glue it onto the chick. It's a little bit big but some of this is going to melt down and I can trim it off when I'm done so 
just going to put some glue on the end here. And then put it in place right on the seam for my little check. So now I want to make just a little bit of fluffy stuff for the top of his head. So I'm just going to use a thin strip. You can make this kind of any shape you want, but I'm just going to make mine kind of tall and skinny, I guess. So I'm going to end up with four little, or six little pieces of single layer plastic. trim it off. So again I'm just going to use my pliers to hold this in place until it's cooled off. I'm going to add a little glue and this will melt pretty quickly the plastic but that's okay you want it to kind of stick together. And then I'm just going to place it on my chick, top of his head. I always burn myself, so I like to use the pliers to avoid that when I can. So now we just want to shape this a little bit. Make it longer in the front and shorter in the back, I think. We'll try that. So now I just need to separate the layers and just trim them into little slits.
So the last thing we need to do to finish the face is just to draw the eyes on with our Sharpie marker. There's my little chick, and we're ready to add a couple of little feet to it. So you can make the legs and feet uh, however long you want to, but I'm going to start with a fairly long piece because you can always make them shorter. So you just want to cut the wire about six or eight inches long, and then fold it in half. And that's going to be the middle toe. Oops. So I'm just going to use my pliers to shape two more toes and then a foot. And then just twist the two pieces together to make the leg. If your wire is soft enough, you can even use your hands for some of this. I've got my three toes roughly shaped. I'm just going to pinch the two wires together and start twisting them. So once you're done twisting it all together, you can go ahead and just kind of straighten out the leg. And just bend the foot up. And then you just need to make another foot and we'll be ready to glue them on the chick. So I've got my two little feet made, and I've decided that for this chick, I'm going to give him pretty long, silly looking legs. So I'm just going to glue these to the bottom with the hot glue gun. So 
So here's my little plastic bag chick peep with one of the eggs that I made in last week's project. So if you missed that video, be sure to check it out. And now we're ready to move on to the cereal box Easter basket. So for this project, I saw it online, so I'm not 100% sure how it's going to turn out when I work make it. But to do this, you're going to make a basket out of this empty cereal box. And the instructions said to just remove these tabs from both ends. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to cut a string, a th fairly thin strand, all the way around the box, which will probably take quite a bit of time. And then you just kind of coil it into a nest or a basket. So I'm curious to see how it'll turn out. Uh, I think that they used a fairly thin strip. So I'm going to start with a, about an eighth of an inch and I'm just going to circle my way all the way around this box until I'm done. So I'll be back in a little bit. So I've cut about a third of the box and I have a pretty unruly amount of cut cardboard. So I've decided to start coiling it and the instructions that I saw, she kind of coiled it up and then used some yarn, I think, to tie it together. But I think I might try some hot glue. So I'm just going to start shaping it and see what happens. All right, I'm not sure how well this is working, but I am just kind of continuing to coil and I am getting a very random shape. And I'm using a lot more glue than I thought I was gonna to have to, but um, I'm just gonna keep kind of building up the sides and hopefully end up with sort of a rusticy looking basket. So here's my basket. I think it looks pretty good on the outside, kind of rustic nest-like. Uh, on the inside you can see I used a ton of glue just to kind of hold everything secure. And there are still some loose pieces, but I think that's sort of okay. It's holding together well enough. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, I have eight strips of cardboard cut to the length that I want to make the handle and I've already glued the ends together with some hot glue and I'm just going to twist them. I'm trying to keep mostly brown on the outside but some of the colors coming through and as I'm twisting I'm adding some glue to the inside edge I'm trying to keep it on the inside and not so, it does, so the glue doesn't show and then I'm just going to hold it and twist it until the glue hardens and then I'll move to the next section. So here's my finished basket. I've gone ahead and glued in the handle with a whole lot of hot glue. And 
normally you could probably just leave it this way. I know from history working with hot glue that if you set this in a window or store it in a hot attic or anything like that, it could come undone just because of the hot glue getting warm and everything kind of letting loose. So I don't know if this is a great idea or not, but I'm going to cover my little basket with some Mod Podge, which I'm expecting to be pretty messy, so I have a thin layer of plastic wrap on my table to protect it. And I'm hoping that this will kind of make it a little more sturdy and keep it together if it gets in warm temperatures. So here's a shot of the finished basket with the little chick peep inside and some of the eggs from last week's project. Thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and checking out my blog at www.upcycledesignlab.com.